Alright guys, so this is Brain Fuel Game of the Day. So this is a uh, Sub Sunday. Shout out to all the subs in the chat. Yes, sir. Sub Sunday. It's a fun day. On Sub Sunday. We in here definitely. Mikey K sent this game over. This is his brother's game playing Mac Moner. In fact, I actually beat him in the uh, Scotch Gambit. Scotch Gambino. So shout out to you guys to the Scotch Gambino players. Make sure you uh, look at the YouTube for that, guys. Scotch Gambit. I beat Mac Moner with the Scotch Gambit with the white side in um, the States Cup, actually. So that's a, a game that's linked in my playlist for Scotch Gambit. So I, I know Mac Moner is a grandmaster. He's very strong. And I beat him, actually. Now, a bugger's life here is actually Mikey K, who's in the chat. This is his brother. Played a game here in the Kings Indian Attack, and it's actually a very nice game. So the ratings here is like 20. Well, let me actually get the ratings. The ratings are... For white in this game, 2165. This is Blitz, by the way. The time control is three minutes, three second increment. 2165 for white and black. Mac Moner, Jeremy Grandmaster, here is 2596. 3 3. Good night, Chad. Good night, Dale's Flask. Okay, so E4, C5. Knight of three, right? Knight of three. So we got a little Cecil, Cecilia, you know. And then E6. And after the E6 move, we have, are you ready for it? Not your regular Sicilian, D3. <laughs> Woo, here we go. This right here is uh the this is like the French type setup. So when you're facing any type of Frenches, it says what the watch this right, watch this, right? So what this is is the king's Indian attack. Whenever you see E6, right? Think about this in the French. Let's look at the French for a second here. A lesson inside of a lesson. First off, the French is 100 percent premium Cambodian. Garbage. Get that boy off the board. We just had a game today earlier. If you look on the YouTube channel, the last video was actually Somebody crushing the French, right? So, I mean, it was just labeled French toast. Bruh. So make sure you go watch that if you haven't already. But after E4, E6. Okay, after E6, D4, and D5. This is just a standard way. Look at the pawn structure of the French. Of the French, okay? This is the French defense. Yeah, go check it out, right? This is the French, okay? This is the French. Let's go back. Now, let's look at the Sicilian. E4, C5. Right, let's say we go C3. E6. And then D4, D5, and E5. My transposition, you've reached some type of Sicilian, I mean, uh, sorry, French defense, right? So in this Sicilian that you're having here, E4, let me actually show you another thing here. One, A good thing oh, that you can play against the French is the King's Indian attack. I'm a fan of this. I actually have videos on YouTube about this again. Make sure y'all on YouTube looking, checking that out. But this is something you can play after D5, Knight to D2, Knight F6, G3. Bobby Fischer was a fan of this, actually, um, from the white side. What's Knight of Three Castles? Like, you have the, like, this is the French again here, but you're playing the King's Indian Attack, is what they call this. Basically, the King's Indian Defense in reverse. Right. So, this is uh, the King's Indian Defense, but playing it from the white side. This is called the KIA or the King's Indian Attack. Okay. So, this is what you can play against the French. You can also play this against the Sicilian, like this. Like I say, you go Knight C6. You could go, oh, sorry, uh, Knight of Three. You could go this. You could still do it this way. It's weird, very weird to play this way. To ultimately commit like this immediately, but you still could play the King's Indian attack virtually against anything. So King's Indian attack players don't care what you play. They're going to play the King's Indian attack. Same thing like King's Indian defense in the way from the black side. All right. Uh, okay. Started playing this. Started playing this against the French last month and you really like it. Yeah, that's good. Grandmaster Stouch. I've had really good games with the King's Indian attack against the French. Definitely against the French. Against other openings, probably not so much, but definitely against the French. Evening, uh, Sir James. What's up, Chess Gamer Supreme? How are you? So, going back to this, this with all that being said, watch this game. E4, C5, Knight F3, okay, E6, D3, D5, Knight B, D2, Knight C6, okay? And now we have what? A French. This is a French defense. This is no longer a Sicilian. This is a King's Indian attack against the French defense. And the French defense, uh, or a King's Indian attack, is very deadly against the French. So bishop e seven, castles castles. We have what we call obviously the 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 real rich line of the king's Indian attack. This is the stuff you look forward to in king's Indian attacks. So castles rookie one, b five. The plans are very simple. Black attacks this way, white on the other side. Very simple. As I draw arrows here, we gonna do this. This is our goal. This is our goal. Queen go to e two, push e five. I used to play this pawn a3 once the pawns get close enough it's called the bobby fisher a3 
Put the pawn on a3 once the pawns get close enough so you can stop the counterplay. Sometimes you play c3, queen definitely goes to e2, knight swings around. This bishop goes to f4, right? And you really bully them. And the bishop sits on h3, even uh, if you look at Bobby Fischer Pano. That's a very, very famous game. Fischer Pano with the bishop on h3, and he goes bishop to f5. I uh, no, no, he goes bishop e4, I think. It's either bishop e4 or bishop f5. It's like a... And the reason why it's crazy is because it could be captured. The bishop can be captured by something. Can we get some more arrows? Oh, yeah, 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 we can. Bruh. Yeah, yeah. Senior Seth, thanks so much for the follow, bro. Appreciate you. And, uh, oh, I mean, not the follow, the tier one. That's that's love right there. Thanks for the love, Senior Seth. Good morning. Really like your explanations. Keep up the good work. Greetings from Russia. My brother's over there in Russia. Thank you. Gina Ork. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for the love. All right, so why does uh, everyone hate the French? I never play it, but I hate playing against it. Well, you got to know what to do, and all you got to do is just watch the YouTube videos. But uh, you know, if you you want to know why you don't like the French, just just play it, just try it, just try it, and when you keep getting hit in the face, Garbage. then you'll be okay. Bruh. Then you'll understand. But uh, you know, you, so you have to try it. You have to get you know. Sometimes people learn from experience of getting kicked in the face, Bruh. and that's okay. So after B five. After b5, e5, right? Which is one of the standard ways you kick the knight. Knight has to do something. Knight goes to d7. Remember all the all, all the arrows we just drew, right? Watch what happens. He goes knight f1, queen c7. Bishop f4 lines up for this. So many tactics. So f6 usually, well, first off, fine, go tripping. Bruh. Don't do it. Secondly, you're going to be in a lot of trouble right now because of this diagonal and the queen sits on it. French is okay, just boring and positional. If you make one error, it breaks down everything and you lose back. No, correct. If you make one error, Bruh. if you think about an error, Bruh. half of an error, Bruh. half of a mistake of an error, Bruh. you're going to lose the game in the French. It's very bad. It's very scary. Very scary, dog. It's very scary. The bishop f4, bishop b7. There's French lines that you can give up three pawns, guys. Imagine that. They, I gave up three pawns, and I'm about to mate you. Like, that's a scary, very scary, scary opening. <laughs> scary side. And I know those lines. That's why I know. I like, I like that stuff. I'm just trying to always disrespect the French. So after Bishop, when I'm playing, uh, <laughs> when I'm playing against the French guys, I have re relentless, ruthless games against the French of sacking material. Bishop to b7 though, knight to e3 in this game. French type structure. He went knight e3. Usually you could go queen e2, and this is the standard way: is h4, knight h2, knight g4, h5, h6. This is literally the standard way that you can play against the French and go for mate all of the time. I had very good, very, very good results with this with white. Knight e3 is sort of an alternative, but also very nifty, right? Because you could go knight g4 anyway. It kind of blocks the file, yes, but it has other intentions. And after rook after c8, boom, he put the rook on c8 because he's about to push forward. Okay, guys, is it's white to move. What are you doing in this position, right? So it's white to move. You know, we know what the plan is. We know what the plan is, but what do we do in this position? White to move. Why is bishop b6 worth three pawns? Also, I, what? Huh? Who, who, t who told you that? A3. Why is K with well, the rating cap? Also, what's the there is no rating cap. You see this all all levels. In fact, the uh, highest rated player that probably uh, uses this is um, Basim. Amin Basim from Egypt plays this like he's like the highest rated player. Twenty seven hundred. It plays the king's Indian attack like all the time. There's no rating cap to it. Queenie two, h4. Queenie two and h4. Very passive bishop, everyone. You need a doctor? Not even sure, bro. Not even sure. Yeah, give me a3. We got a3, king h1. Thanks for the follow, spine cruncher. Knight d5 from Dougie Jones. Here we go. Y'all ready? Here it is. The man play here. Now remember, the rating difference is 2186 for white, 2596 for black. Grandmaster Magmonder. Here it is. The man plays. 1985. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Jeez. Oh my goodness. Uh oh. Uh oh. That is the idea here that he missed. Knight takes d5, and we live. Hit that man with a movester. And after e takes d5, he hit him with e6. Split that man open here. Give me the piece back. I appreciate you. And then after queen d8, right, you should take your piece back, right? You just take your piece back, right? 
Right, chat? Take the piece back, right? Take the piece back. Or he takes F7. I don't care nothing about the piece. I don't care nothing about that piece. I don't care. You can have it, Grandmaster Mac Molnar. You can have the piece. After King takes F7, Knight G5, and we live. Very nice move. He's like, yo, I'll just take it. So he does. He takes it. Boom. Right? And then he hit him with the haymaker from the other side of the board. I forgot that this piece was even here. Bang. Oh. Where did this even come from? Where did this even come from, bro? I forgot he was even here. And then you forget the other homies. Check there. Oh, my goodness. This is getting very scary. Look at this attack right now. Wow. Grandmasters do get hit too. 97. Okay. Can you find... The move here, guys. Can you find the move? Now, he actually blundered right here. White definitely blundered. Played, honestly, the worst move of the three on the engine. Still playable, but the worst of the three moves. Definitely garbage. garbage. But he had, a, he had a much better move here. Definitely garbo. But um, it still worked out. Queen f3, queen h5. Yeah, you got to keep, keep an eye out for those type of checks. Sarcastic guillotine. Exactly. Bishop takes b7 from spine cruncher. That is a spine crunching move there. Bishop takes b7. A3, 100% uh, garbo. Queen f3, easy clap. All right, so what he played was queen h5. For the people in the back, one, two, three, here we go. Garbage. Terrible. He played queen h5, actually. This is uh, not the worst. I mean, this is the worst of the three moves that he can make. In fact, the best is queen f3 bishop takes b7 is the next move and queen h5 is actually the worth third queen f3 is very strong though queen f3 and also you could have taken the bishop on b7 so shout out to you if you said the one of those right this is easy but he went queen h5 which is still winning bishop takes d5 because now he's giving this piece back but he takes on g5 right and then knight f6 happens and then after knight f6 bro what Bruh. i mean first off you look at this he don't even have any moves. He has to go knight e5 and I think like rook c7. Which may not even be possible. If you do queen takes e5 and then you have to go like here. Wow, he's still in the game. Oh my goodness. I mean, he's winning, but... Miraculously, Mac Mona would still be in the game here. That's nuts. He had to find this line, but that's like ridiculously hard to find. It's knight e5 and then moving the king and giving both of the pieces back. <laughs> Give all the material back. But he went knight of six. He went knight of six. After knight of six, he just crossed him here. Bishop takes e7. Send him to heaven. Takes, takes. Split him, hitting. Woo! Here go everything. Everything must go. King e6. Oh my goodness. Combos everywhere. Oh, uh, the king is out in the middle of the street in the wilderness, guys. Somebody get him. Somebody get him. Knight takes. Check. Check. Everything must go. Check. Why is he still making moves? I don't even know. Nobody knows. Queen F7 and mate to follow. And that was it, actually, here. So, you know, Obagger Scythe here being 2196 was able to take down Mac Moner here in his three minute and three second increment game. So, never give up, guys. Number one. Number two, right? Play your hardest no matter who you play. Be very, very strong there. That's a very nice attack. Thanks for sending the game over to uh, Mikey K. This was a brain field game of the day, guys. Make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube. See y'all, guys, on the next one.